Hey, this is Mo Lunsford at Union Grove Lumber Studios. And this is the Shed Geek. We want to welcome you to today's episode. Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Shed Geek Podcast. Tristan, well over 200 of these going now, man, and I'm excited, super excited to have you back on. I can't wait till we're hitting a 1,000. The only thing I'm struggling with is remembering all the people, the conversations, the people we've met and all that, and uh, that's why I like an ongoing relationship conversation, keep having those, Mm -hmm. and uh, I've been able to have that with you as well, too, and uh, I just want to I know you've been on before, but I want to welcome you back and I want to give you a chance to, to talk about Cal and, uh, just, uh, give people whatever you want to to give them, man, a little more understanding of who you are and what you do, the services you provide. So tell the audience a little about yourself. How about that? Yeah. Well, thank you, Shan. It's it's good to be back and, um, and to visit, um, yeah, we've been, you know, uh, in the software space for, you know, 20 years. Um, and now we're in the shed space and the carport space and the playset space and dealers and manufacturers and dealer manufacturers, and manufacturers that are dealers. Um, this space is really, really fun. Um, and so we, you know, we pivoted pretty hard into, into a, a point of sale solution and order management for, you know, dealers and manufacturers. Um, and because, it, you know, our broad history in logistics and software, um, we, we just, feel like our software helps you sell anything. You know, that's the beautiful thing about our software is like, it's not specific to a shed manufacturer, although we have shed manufacturers, um, but you know, a lot of dealers, you know, they rep three, four, five products, you know, they've got, you know, play sets, um, they, they, they build a line of sheds and they sell Eagle carports, you know, like they're just all over the map and, and they need a way to have one system that sort of can, you know, marry that all together. Um, and, you know, like even what's, what, you know, like, you know, RTO, you know, you can have one person do RTO, or in this case, there are a lot of little RTO companies out there, big RTO companies out there. And because relationships are so important in this industry, relationships, they're important in every industry, but in the shed industry in particular, you know, th- these are deep family relationships, deep community relationships. You know, we want to just integrate your partners into our system. So, you know, you can have three, four, five, six different partners if you want, or you can use the ones we're integrated with, but we're happy to integrate with any RTO company, any um, any configurator. We have Shed Pro and Idea Room right now. Um, we work with, you know, Shed Geek Rentals, you know, Shannon, and then we work with JMEG and Heartland and Scott's RTO. We're talking to Easy Pay. You know, we're we're open to integrating because really it's, awesome. it's your business. You know, you're the shed owner, the shed dealer, the manufacturer. You know, we want you to bring your partners to our system so that you have familiarity with them and then have one spot to do most of your transactions. Um, and so that's why we're really excited about what we're doing because we're working with people and their, their network. I love it, dude. And you hit on something early on, you know, me and you've talked about this a little bit, uh, you know, people work with, they buy from people they trust, right. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. like building some good brand authority and building a good trusted, uh, relationship really matters. It really, it really works. And it does a lot of the work for you. Uh, whenever people feel like they can trust you, you know, you're not just, mm-hmm. you're not just selling on service and, and, and value. Those things are incredibly important. Um, but you know, whenever I sold sheds, I had some people that would come to me cause they trusted me. I didn't have to give them the spiel about the warranties. I didn't have to give them the spiel about, you know, the service and all that, make sure my, my oatmeal cream pies and bottles of waters were readily available. And they walked in the door, they knew me. They knew me. And because they knew me, they knew that whatever I was selling, they were going to be happy with because they were happy to buy from me. And uh, I think that's the that's the power. So many dealers hold out there now already Mm -hmm. is, you know, do they do they realize that like sometimes it's brand, sometimes it's just them. So trust is such an important thing. And we've tried to establish that and build on that. And I know that's super important for Cal as well too yeah. that people are buying from Tristan they're not just buying from and, and Tristan's this whole this whole character right like he's he's, yeah, this, absolutely. he's this he's this guy outside of just Cal and like we're doing business he's you know he's a, a loving son who's taking care of his parents you know what i mean he's a christian who's faithful in his duties and his responsibilities and and most of our conversations Tristan don't circle around our business together they end yeah. up circling around Jesus. Like me and you talk about <laughs> like mm-hmm. our ministry more, I think, than our business. I think that's beautiful. So uh, yeah. yeah. It is it is easier sometimes to talk about the Lord actually um, than to talk yeah. about what you do. 
right? You know, sometimes it's easier to just talk about who you serve as opposed to, you know, why I'm here today. Um, but in the end, it's it's all blended together, right? Because yeah, the people right. we serve also are, in many cases, you know, sons, husbands, wives, daughters, have parents who now are getting older and they need to be able to pivot with them or they're transitioning to a different, you know, a different um, family structure even, right? Now son's taking over, the next generation's coming in. Um, you know, and, and and being a part of those transitions is so beautiful, right? Because um, it's tender and it's hard and it, you know, has to be clear and concise. And, and the new generation has, you know, appetite for new tools, right? Like we were talking with this one place that manufacturer and he wants to use our system because um, you know, his dealers just need an easier way to do play sets, but there really isn't a software that can do play sets. But he also sells sheds and carports, right? But he wants to focus on a dealer network and play sets. Like, well, we could do play sets. That's not a big deal, right? Um, you know, we, we tweak it here and there for them to be successful, you know. But in the end, he said, you know, these younger families that are buying play sets, you know, sometimes grandma and grandpa buy them, but the younger families, they're not afraid to buy a play set online. You know, they're seeing that, you know, the kids are willing to buy cars and play sets and even sheds online. And they're like, well, how do we get to e-commerce? Yeah, well, we can help you with that. We can do either the assisted sale where they get a quote from the internet or they could fully do an RTO contract. Shoot, those customers all know who their work references are. They all know where they live. They all know, you know, um, their phone number and their address. Um, you know, and with these new configurators out there in particular and the calculators we build, you know, you can dial your budget right in, you know, as a consumer, right into what you can afford. You can say, oh, okay, I can afford $300 a month. I can afford $500 a month. And if you can't, you just draw the building a little smaller. You take a slide off in this case and you add a climbing wall and you say, oh, I can afford that. You know, but you're you're actually with, with Idea and Shed Pro and those configurators, you're getting a qualified customer right out of the gate. And so sure, let them fill out the contract, you know, and take a deposit if you want to. And if you want them to call you, because there are things, Shannon, in the space you know, how big is your fence? What does the overhead wires look like? You know, what, how close are the trees to your house? You have to know some things when you buy a shed online. Like, yeah. you know, there are some things that will help the transaction go better than just, you know, putting out a deposit. So, you know, we can help wherever you're comfortable with. But there's a new generation coming, you know, and you've got a couple of kids in their 20s. You know, they're fine using their internet. They are fine buying online. They trust that way more than you and I might, you know, and maybe they're more savvy and maybe they're just more naive. I don't know which. <laughs> but, you know, they're willing to buy online. Um, and so the point of sharing that story is, you know, this is a dealer network, but he also reps products and he also, you know, buys from the manufacturers. And we can support all of his all of his business activity because we're we're just multi dimensional. You know, we're not shed specific. We're not manufacturer specific, you know, and we let you bring your configurators, let you bring your RTO companies. Right. Um and so we can kind of build out who you're already doing business with and then give you one easy point of sale solution and some good order management tools. And, it, and that's where we're sort of focusing. Isn't it the beauty of collaboration? You know, I like to say that the beauty of collaboration when it works is that all parties are happy. You know, like mm -hmm. there is a skewed view of collaboration that says, uh, I get something, you may get something. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's, that's, that's not what we're doing here. Like, that's not why Shed Geek Rentals, you know, chose to work with Cat. You know, we're, it's because yeah. it benefits us. It doesn't yeah. just benefit me. It doesn't just benefit you. It benefits us. And I think that's the way a good, true collaboration should work. And you're seeing a lot of this in the Shed industry, which is really awesome mm -hmm. because the way technology kind of busted onto the scene like a Kool-Aid man jumping through the wall, everybody's <laughs> like, wait a minute, all these choices, there's so much. And then there's this and that. And then what about service? What about price? What about all of these things? But then there's yeah. like, what about all the technical components about you guys working together? Because there can become a, there can become almost like a skewed, like I have to work with this one or I have to mm -hmm. work with that. And it's like, well, have you ever considered that sometimes they might work together? to solve more of your problems <laughs> instead of just this, yeah. this uh, unrealistic allegiance to, to one brand. There is like some of those brands are choosing to be like, wait a minute, we can help you and and you, the customer, the shed manufacturer or the RTO mm -hmm. uh, company looking for these products. Yeah. You win, you win in the battle because we work together on these things. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I find it interesting. You know, I mean, this industry has just been in place for a long time, right? And there's some, you know, some Amish and Mennonite builders that are, you know, limited in tech. And then, you know, they have, you know, dealer networks they've set up. And sometimes, you know, you take your commission in the deposit world. Sometimes you get a check at the end of the month, you know. And, and so the, the industry is really diverse. 
but they they have relationships. And and the thing about me is I love relationships. I'm much more happy having this conversation about your your network because you're just involved in people's lives. You're making a difference in your community. You have tools. But also I want, I don't like having all my eggs in one basket, you know, and, and there are some all in one solutions, you know, but in the end, I want to be like so diverse that if, if you, if you need like three or four or five RTO partners, we can put them all in the system. If you just do, you know, carports through easy pay or Heartland, no problem. You know, when you choose a carport, those are the RTO companies that show up, you know, and if you do sheds and then you, you, know, you work with JMEG and Chicky Reynolds and, you know, Scott's RTO or something, you know, that's easy as well. You know, we just show those and then you just train your sales team to use whichever one is appropriate for you because it is nice to have multiple partners in some ways. Um, it's easier to have one partner, but really, you know, having two or three trusted partners is just safer. The Bible teaches us that, right? A multitude of counselors is is, is safety, right? And so for us, you know, we're, we're just trying to help, help our clients, you know, run a little faster, save a little time and take advantage of technology so it makes their lives better. We've, we've even had um, in our in sort of our marketing campaign, we've had customers that sign up that say, well, you know, we use this RTO provider. Uh, we, we like you guys. And, and you know what? Maybe you'll be a, a follow up call if something falls through. But my question is, is there conflict in providing marketing if we're not using your RTO? And I'm like, why would why would there be conflict? And they're like, well, just because, you know, you're not seeing the benefit. I was like, oh, no, no, I think you're misunderstanding. I'm here to serve you. You know what I mean? Like, I like I'm not here to serve me. You know what I mean? That's probably what you're used yeah. to. You know what I mean? So like, I'm not here. So like, if, if wait a minute, you're telling me that that RTO provider is going to do better because we're going to do good on our marketing and that could somehow cause me some pain point. And they're like, well, mm -hmm. yeah, wouldn't it? And I'm like, well, then I'm serving me. Mm -hmm. If I think that way and choose to not do business with you. No, we're here to serve you. And if subsequently your RTO provider does mm -hmm. better because of it, then so be it. It's the same as offering, you know, uh, advertising on the show. I'm like, well, I know probably some RTO providers aren't going to uh, either come on the show or, or, or offer that, but I'll make them make that choice. Like I yeah. won't make that choice for them. You're available to come on. You're available to advertise. But what if I get some business? Oh, no. Oh, no. What if you get some business? You know, it's like uh, so it's one of those things where, I, where, I, where I'm just like, I love the collaborative efforts between all the parties that are doing it well. And you, sir, are doing a great job in, in that. Yeah, and we've you. been. Super excited and very pleased with any collaborative efforts we've done with you guys on Shed Geek Rentals. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about, so somebody's driving down the road today, they're hammering away, uh, building a shed today, and they say, Cal, Consumer mm -hmm. Line Logistics, what does yeah. that mean? I, I, give me the give me the, the, the sixth grade elementary explanation of what Cal is. Back by popular demand. Let's dive deeper into the Zula from Mobino Solar Solutions. This remarkable shed ventilation system armed with three potent fans not only prevents mold by maintaining optimal moisture levels, but also acts as a shield against indoor allergens, ensuring a clean and healthy workspace. The Zula is more than just ventilation. It's an air quality superhero. Powered by solar panels, it revolutionizes your shed experience, creating an environment where you can breathe easy. Elevate your workspace with Zula, the ultimate solution for improved air quality and circulation. Visit Mobino Solar Solution today and breathe in the freshness. Visit Mobino's site for more on this innovative solar shed ventilation solution and use the Shed Geek 10 for an extra 10% discount. Go now to www.mobinosolarsolutions.com. It basically just streamlines your sales process. You know, we okay. allow you not to use file cabinets to hunt down paper, who has the nicest handwriting, eliminates the errors from poor handwriting, and I am chief among the poorest handwriters there is. Um, and then to have one consistent place, you, you could be, you know, and Shannon, you, you live this world right now. You get in that RV and I talk to you here in Texas or, you know, Virginia or whatever, you know, you could log into the Cal system and you could check on the day's sales. No problem. You could, you know, see if there's one that needs your attention. Um, you can, um, you know, you could be on vacation and just pop in and look at the dashboard and see what's happening. Um, matter of fact, you can take a phone call and complete a sale. Right. So you're no longer tied to your location as much. So that means you can be virtual. So like if you have a sales call at somebody's house, 
you know, you're going to go talk about a carport. You can bring your iPad with you, your tablet with you, log into their Wi-Fi there, and you can draw the building in Idea Room or Shed Pro, and you can complete the transaction right in their living room. Um, and all the paperwork signed right there. You know, we use a, you know, a digital signing service so we can get a real good stamp on it. Um, and so the Cal software really allows the team members to spend less time chasing paper and more time closing deals. Um, you know, and we have some clients that are Mennonite and, and Amish, you know, we built systems to get them bigger email pictures so that they can fax them around, you know, in their community so they can get good drawings, right? Um, you know, like it, we wanted to serve these people wherever they are. And we want to serve the smaller manufacturer um, and dealers in particular, right? Whether you're a wholesale shed buyer or whether you're a true dealer and you're repping five different carport companies, you know, we, we handle that. Like we are happy to help you um, sell more carports, more shed, more play sets, more trailers, more golf carts. You know, we are, we just like to help you sell whatever you want to sell. And I think diversity in the marketplace, being able to do multiple things with your software is so important, you know, and then when we, you and I, Shannon, were talking, you know, and you brought up Shaggy Grinnells, you know, there was a point where we figured out that a lot of the smaller RTO companies aren't going to invest in a technology platform. And one of their challenges was, was actually getting away from fax and email and snail mail contracts. And so we, we, we figured out how to do that. And we actually built a, it's a contract platform where you can receive the contracts and it imports directly into RTO Pro, you know, and so you can do batch imports or one at a time, but essentially, you know, your dealers can just log in and they can, you know, create the contract right there on your space. And then they can upload delivery sheets and invoices. And it just, it helped a small RTO company, you know, organize their digital world so they could get those contracts more reliably, more cleanly, you know, more correctly, um, and then get the payments also to them as well. Um, you know, chasing cash as an RTO company. Oh my goodness, Shannon, I feel for those companies who are trying to get those dealers to finally mail them the checks and the cash. With our system, you can just upload the ACH version of that check into the portal, and then it's out of your hair completely. And of course, cash is cash, but they could also just make a payment from their own account and keep the cash themselves and make a payment on the contract, right? And so we just made it simpler for RTO companies to serve, you know, their back-end solutions, right? The team is having to do all the double entries and try to get the chasing paper, and then also for the customer, you know, it's easier for them as well. So we're, we're excited about that platform. So we figured that out after hanging out in the space that there are companies like Shaggy Reynolds who don't have a way to get a contract online. Yeah. You know, and so yeah. we just built a platform for that. And we're super excited yeah, about that product as well. Well, and it's, it's worked great. You know, whenever we jumped into the RTL space, of course, I was working in the RTL space, even whenever I, I started the podcast. And uh, who knows, we may edit this out, we may keep it in. We don't edit too much, but uh, I'm pretty transparent and, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, I like to I like to build consumer confidence and things like that. And what we're doing, man, we jumped into the marketing. We didn't know what to expect. And I'm, I'm pretty confident that I can say this as long as it doesn't sound like a statement of arrogance, but rather a statement of humility, because uh, I, I couldn't get up and walk through the store without God's permission. I couldn't do anything mm -hmm. I do without God's permission. So yeah. like, I don't like, you know, it's like I told you before the call started, I take what he gives. And, and if he doesn't give what what others get, then that's okay because it's not meant for me. But we're excited to say that we've worked with as many as as thirty uh, uh, clients in the marketing space already, uh, mm -hmm. and 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 we're like we're six months in, and we're like, oh wow, this is this is really a need in the industry that we're recognizing that we can yeah. scale. Uh, and then with with rent to own, um, you know, it's just a little bit it's just a little bit different. I mean, you've talked about that because it's so established already. We really want to put some education behind it. We really want to focus on our marketing and how how mm -hmm. the you know a lot of these guys are. I used to struggle with the dealer premiums and things like that. And I'm like, oh, how do you give this? And it's just like you know, you give two percent. That guy gives three and four and five. You go back and forth. I was like, man, I want to provide so much service, so much value that it's really not to be competed with. So we were like, hey, let's take that 5% dealer premium and let's dump it into marketing and we'll make your value 10%, 15% because we'll start yeah. to show you different levels of where your business can go. Hopefully, if we do a good job and the Lord allows us. So if you are an RTO provider and you go to the NVSRA, or whatever, and you're like, but you know what? I don't have a solution here. For my RDL contract, you should give Tristan a call. Our experiences went really good with him. A lot of good yeah, people out there doing a lot of good things. So I'm not taking anything away from anybody. I'm telling you, my experience has been has been good. And I think you should at least give him a call, do a discovery call, that kind of thing. Now, if you're a manufacturer, 
you're probably struggling with just a basic point of sale. I love paper, Tristan. I've got it here, right here. Yeah. I'm sitting here writing down notes and stuff we're talking about and things we're doing. And this is the old CRM. This is the old paper yeah. CRM. It still, it still works good. Sticky notes yeah. everywhere. But I don't know about you, sir, but I just became a grandpa and mental notes fail me at times. <laughs> and, and, well, and, Cecilia and, Rose is a beautiful little girl. She is oh, really man. beautiful. She's precious, dude. She's just great. I, I appreciate that. She's She's got my heart already. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. It's it's great. It's it, this is a special part of life for us. Uh, mm -hmm. And thank you for that. I would tell you that from a manufacturer who struggles, it yes, it's good to put stuff on paper. It's mm -hmm. good to have a nice contract. It, it, it's even okay to have a fillable PDF, and you might be able to get through business yeah. uh, doing that. But but my question is. Can you go to the next level? Should you go to the next level? And if so, who should you go to that with? So if you're trying to get a point of sale system across, like who do you call? How do you manage that? Um, yeah. and, and lots of good options. Lots of good options. But no, there's great industry partners in this world. Yeah. yeah. But I do feel like, I mean, one of the things about Cal, which we appreciate, is that we allow you to wade in, right? You know, you can just add, you know, the point of sale system at this point, And then, you know, we can work on other integrations later. Or if you, you want to just add idea room and shed pro or whatever, and then you know our system, that's great too. So we we want you to sort of like you know adopt technology as you're comfortable with it, but it's not really it's not it's more when you're going to adopt technology. You are using technology; it's just old technology. Pen and paper is a great improvement over you know our memories. Um, a file cabinet is a great improvement over our desk. You know, and so we are using technology. It's a matter of organizing that right. Um, yeah. And, you know, and, and the amount of time we spend in the office chasing paper, the ROI with the configurator and Cal is huge because you, you get these efficiencies going this way back into the system where you have less trouble, less people, um, you know, less need for chasing paper. And then you get the marketing benefit of that configurator. You know, you start to win on all levels with the purchase like Cal and integration with the, with the, with the configurator because you're getting marketing wins and you're also getting increased efficiency in the office. And people are a premium. Oh, my word. You know, finding a good team and giving them better tools so they can run faster and be more organized. I mean, when we when we started in this space, you know, four years ago, we were still we were still doing organic home delivery of fruits and vegetables. We were farming people, and um, and during that pandemic, you know, we scaled our business three times, just like the shed industry did. But we didn't hire any people. It was it was painless because we already had all the systems in place. You know, and that's when I got this, like, you know, and you and I are, are cut from the same class, Shannon, like always be serving, right? Like we took right. good, good profit and good money and we invested it back into making the lives of small business owners better because we saw the benefit. I thought, oh my goodness, if other businesses who can't necessarily make this investment in technology or don't have the time to make the investment in technology, if I could help them. And of course we were looking to do it for you know, other farms and CSAs and home delivery companies, right? And then we ended up in the home delivery space, sheds, tiny houses, carports, you know, and so um, just to some friends who Dave Ramsey and stuff. And so, you know, we ended up here and we just love this space. This space is filled with good people, hardworking people, but they also need tech. They need some kind of technology that will make their lives easier and it's not hard to adopt. And then it has to be affordable, Shannon. It has to be affordable. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, you have to be able to justify the expense because, you know, we don't want to move in, but there is a there is a cost to using technology. And we found people, you know, our clients in particular, they're leery of it. And so we come in at such an affordable price point. You know, it's, it's going to take me, you know, 50 or 60 clients to, to really make a profit. But that's OK with me because I'm serving 50 or 60. If it only took me one or two clients to make a profit, then I'm probably charging too much. You know, and, yeah. you know, for me. As a business owner, fees and costs are important. They do matter. And you have to bring more value as a business to businesses if you're going to do business with them. You know, it's a win-win. It's well, it's yeah, I agree with 100% of what you're saying. I've learned this, and I'll I'll, I'll say this at, at risk of losing any, any audience. <laughs> let me tell you, let me tell you, selling to the shed industry is a lot different than getting sold from them uh, because we're consumers. We all think... Yeah. You know, uh, well, we sell a quality building, so they shouldn't really think about price because, you know, they're we're, we're going to sell something quality. But then whenever we buy, we think about price ourselves. 
You know what I mean? And it, so yeah, no. it, it, you got to think about the way you sell also and the way that you consume, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and the way that other people consume as well, too, because, you know, not everybody buys the way you shop. But but if we just take and look internally on us, we go, uh, well, this is a good product. I know my price point. I know my value. So this is what we're going to, you know, put it at. But then but then I go shop something and I go, oh, man, how much is that? And it's like, wait a minute, isn't that the one question you don't like to hear first and foremost from a shed shopper? Because you mm -hmm. want them to be involved in the quality of what you do and not just the, yeah. the price. That's important, but it's not the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you guys, uh, you guys are able to compete in that space. It's really about apples for apples. Like I want to be able to sell the best shed at the best price also. And the only way you mm -hmm. can do that is, is your unique business model. So I think the right. same way with like, uh, you know, your, your, your POS systems, you know what I mean? Like you got to be able to provide mm -hmm. the most service at the best price point you can. And the only way you, you can control that. This is why we're, we, we, we say we're a copycat industry, but this is where we're not. No one can copy your service. No one can copy your dedication. No one can co they copy your price. They can, they can copy your paint. They can copy this or that or whatever. But generally yeah. speaking, like they can't copy your heart and your service and your willingness to go in and go the extra mile. And that's what you guys have done for us. And we appreciate that. So, um, um, and people what, Chad, and also are just different. The industry is full of all kinds of people with all kinds of needs. And sometimes they need a complete ERP solution because they're just mammoth and that's okay. You know, yeah. we want to serve the smaller, you know, one to 20 or 30 dealer network, right? Like we're looking to serve the smaller businesses um, who are content with, you know, owning a county as opposed to owning the state or owning the country, right? And, and you know, and, and so um, we can serve big, big clients, but really, you know, we are, we're just small businesses and we love serving small businesses. And so our tools tend to reflect, you know, that sort of scale and niche where it makes sense for a small business to adopt. And then it's really important that we also just hear from them. What do they really want to accomplish? Why are they mm -hmm. calling us? You know, the, that customer who sells play sets, you know, he was like, you know, he sells a bunch of sheds and carports, but he had a, he led with his email, you know, play sets was the very first thing. I'm like, okay, why did he lead with play sets? I don't even see that on his website, you know? And it's like, because he has a need in play sets, you know, we had to lean into what his real need was, you know, right now and he wants to solve this play set dealer network, right? Um, you know, so we're happy to, you know, to serve that need. And we can serve all of his business, you know, but right now he wants to work on his play sets. Fine. Wait in. Wait in with play sets and then we'll bring over the other things. Right. But for sure, we are happy to encourage you to get the right partner for you. And we're not always the right partner. You know, there are other companies that do things differently. But if you are kind of selling multiple products, multiple SKUs, whether it's lawn furniture or gazebos or sheds, carports, and in this case, play sets, we are a viable solution and we're super affordable. You know, we we want to we want to serve you and help you run faster because as we've also shared, Jen, one of my passions is small business owners. Small business owners are deacons in churches. They teach Bible studies. They coach Little League. You know, right. they go to Kiwanis meetings. They are the heart of their local communities. And if they're wrapped in paper, then they can't run as fast. But if they can actually get free of all the processes and have it all streamlined, they can run a little faster. They can serve more in their community. Oftentimes, we just serve in our businesses because that's what we're passionate about. But really, we have outside passions that we can't get to or do as well, like grandparenting, right? I got number nine just the same time you got yours, right? And that little critter, he is precious. Oh, my goodness. He is amazing, right? And number 10 is coming. I've got to have time to spend time with this generation that's coming. They're going to need grandma. Yep. You know, they're going that's to right. need grandma. And so for us, the tools have helped us actually have more balance in our world, but also do it from, you know, when I'm rocking a baby, I can be on my phone checking what's going on in my software. You know, I can put in my AirPods and talk to you and do a transaction, right? And so now yeah. I'm multi-talented because I can actually be working from, you know, the crate, you know, just holding on to my baby and my, my grandson or whatever. And so I'm excited about those tools. I'm learning about consultation more and more because we've talked for so long about creating the third leg of the uh, the tabletop of Shed Geek Podcast and making it consultation. I don't know if we'll get there when we'll get there or, or whatever. Uh, again, I'll take as the Lord gives, you know what I mean? Uh, but but uh, I, I found something interesting in researching even other companies. One guy, what he does at his consultation is he doesn't just come in for your business. He comes in and talks to you about your health. He comes in and talks to you about your diet. And you're like, wait a minute, I just called on you for has called on you for my business needs. Like I'm not, you know, I don't need all of this. And he's like, man, a balanced life is going to help you in your business. Are you considering, 
you know, your body is your temple. Are you considering like what you're taking in, you know, your, your mm-hmm. time blocking, your mental health? At iFab LLC, our passion is welding, fabricating, and design. That's why in 2015, we began to commercially market our product to the shed, portable building, and mini barn industry. Our product is primarily used to build trusses. Our truss saw system cuts boards in one motion, and our truss press system installs and presses the gusset plates to a finished truss. We custom fabricate jigs that assure perfectly symmetrical truss setup without error. We also have other products designed to help your shed builder increase quality, efficiency, and save money. Our precision door tape will build your custom doors square every time and easily adjust to build any door. For products like these or other custom fabrication services for your barn shop, visit ifabllc.com or call 563-422-7496 or simply email us at ifabllc at gmail.com. It, it, it's kind of like how a conversation goes real quick on how our shed sales this year. Like, oh, well, it's an election year. We just go straight to national politics. And 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 for some reason, now all of a sudden, like national politics are affecting our inability to sell sheds on the lot. And it's like, well, we know there's trickle down, but generally speaking, we can, we can get out of that frame of mind and we can just put effort to go in today and sell and not be like, well, great. Great. Biden's stopping me from succeeding. And it's like, well, you know, I, I think it's more, it's deeper than that. Right. So like, we don't yeah. like, I mean, I, I partially agree with you. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, so was, you know, Bill Clinton and Reagan and Obama and Trump exactly. and, you exactly. know, all of them are stopping us and helping us in some way, you know, there's something exactly. going on. <laughs> but it's not the it's not the catalyst for like why we're succeeding and failing today. So I thought that was really interesting on his thought of like taking an approach to health and like the whole thing to consultation. So it's mm-hmm. it's uh, where I'm trying to tie that back is it's about being well rounded just in general. It's about you know what I'm saying, being able to 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 manage your day uh, mm-hmm. transactionally, like you're saying without it being like a major pull on us and a major thought of like, oh, I got to log into that system. This is going to be a struggle. We don't want that. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. How's your experience been with Josh and Justin? Like, they oh, should man, be your team up. is really good. Um, they've I love been really guys. solid. Um, they're they're yeah. really nice young men. Um, I say that now because I, you know, I, I realize I'm almost 60. I'm like, when did that happen, by the way? Um, right. But, you know, those guys are like my children almost. Like, what happened here? Um, so... Um, they have, they're really insightful. And, and actually, you know, everybody who's in the RTO space, you know, in particular RTO space, they're just sharp minds. You know, when yeah. I guess when you, you know, they just sharpen those pencils and they think things through. And and because we collaborate with so many people, you know, the product just keeps getting better and better, right? Because, you know, the nuances of how you run your business versus somebody over here, over there, what the needs are, you know, we just start to cover a lot of the industry, whether you do CRA this way or you do greater initial payments or, you know, whether you two payments down or one payment down or whether you want to have different product for yeah. carports, you know, and, and so it's it's fun for us to run with, with you know, you know, that generation because they really get it. Um, but yeah, those guys are really talented, but the whole industry is talented. It's been, it's been amazing to, to work in that space. Um, and, and I think about, you know, what we're doing and we're just building products that serve, right? Like we're serving different parts because the industry really is, you know, you have manufacturers, you have these guys who have air saws that just chop like four things at once, chop, chop, you know, and they're serving the shit industry, right? And then you have people who are doing the drawing programs, they're serving the industry. And then you have the finance piece, they're serving the industry. And so the, the manufacturing piece is kind of the hub of it all. But you know what the dealers do? They start the whole process because without yeah. a dealer, you got nothing to do. Without the dealer making a sale, everything comes to a stop. Right. And so we're all integrated together, but also making sure those dealers have those good tools to create frictionless sales to make it easy for the customer to buy from them. That's that starts the whole process. You know, do you, to the dealer starts the whole process. Do you have a way to walk me through some of this? Do you have like if a dealer wants to see if a manufacturer wants to see uh, RTO mm-hmm. client, whatever, you have something that you can like just, I don't know, a little synopsis. Maybe they can get on with you, do an actual discovery car or whatever. But I think seeing the software, like we talk about visual all the time because it's so important. 
like so do you have anything you could share with them for those that are watching on youtube you know you can yeah. kind of get a glimpse of this but for those of you who who are not you can still go check it out or message mm -hmm. me we'll try to send you a clip of it or whatever it looks like but yeah. seeing, seeing we're advertising with you as well shannon right and so they can just scan that qr code on your ad um, yeah. and they go right to our website the website's you know calcanhelp.com um, I thought about that for a long time, like Cal can help, but now, you know, it, it flows so nicely. Matter of fact, my name is not Cal, you know, it's no longer Tristan, you know, just call me Cal and I will answer the phone. I'm totally guilty of being Cal, um, <clears throat> but it's my personality. It's serving, right? Like I was, you know, during a flood one time, we lived in the floodplain and, and some guys, he's like, do you just run around and serve people? Like, he's like, you know, scratching it, like, cause I, you know, his hay was getting rained on. So I brought my boys over and we were going to help him. Cause you just run around and serve people. Like, what do you do? Yes. As a matter of fact, that's what I like to do. Run around and serve people. <laughs> so, yes. So. <laughs> yes. In short, yes. That's what I do. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Thank you for noticing that I'm always here to help if I can. Uh, but I I'll also make sure. at the same moment, right, that, that sometimes it's better to drive by and pray because I really can't help, you know. And so as much as you think you might want to help, can you help, yeah. you know. And so, like, I'm, I, I'm always praying, but then I do stop and help sometimes. <laughs> Well, I got to admit, no one, no one said, no one's called you Cal to me yet, but I can see how that happens. Uh, Tr Tristan's the name, Cal's the brand, and uh, this is what Cal does. This is what 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 they do. You care to walk us through a little bit of that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so um, this is the same for Shed Pro and Idea Room. It, it, it functions the same. They're different configurators, of course, but. Um, we use these tools up here in the corner. You can actually create an order from Idea Room or you can create a product from Idea Room. If you create a product from Idea Room, you can create virtual products. You know, you can submit for inventory requests or you can import your drawings. So we have a way for you to bring in your existing inventory right here as well. Um, and then, of course, you have all your tools over here. Um, and so, you know, you can get there from our tools right here and go to your carports, your sheds. And then, you know, we have our own set of tools to work with Idea Room in addition to the sales new tools that people have as well. Um, but over here in this world, this is where, you know, a salesperson would log in and we have different sales tools for the sales people. And they just have a different, um, let me click on that again. Um, they just have a, a skinnier version of, of the, of the tools available because they're salespeople. They don't need to have all the admin access and things like that. Right. But everybody, so they have their own dashboard of what's going on in their sales. Just a little quick, you know, screen view, all their orders here, any quotes they're working on, they can see the status of the order. So if the customer calls them and says, Hey, what's going on in my building? Oh, you know, we're just processing that or it's pending or it's in production. You know, this tells the salesperson so they can just you know, quickly tell the customer what's going on. But the customer also with our system has their own login. And they could go to their own section and they could see where their building is as well, what status it's in. So, you know, you can eliminate a lot of conversation just by this little bit of information right here, um, you know, and that's good enough. You know, and if you're a manufacturer, you know, you want to know what's going on as well. So manufacturers can see all this as well. Um, but the salesperson can kind of get a quick view of what's going on with the building at that point right here. And you can just quickly start it. This is a draft order here. You can click on it and start it. I'll just click on it here and it'll just open up the sales process at that point, and then you can walk it through the system. And so we've got this bar right here and we can edit that if we need to, we can add prices, fees, discounts, you know, we can add the customer information right here. You can do a rent own or a buy outright. Um, you know, and it's just different questions, but it all starts the same way, Shannon, right? The same sale, no matter what it is, it all starts right here. And if you're doing like say a gazebo, there aren't many configurators for gazebos. You would just do the manual order entry process. And you would just type in the specs you need for that, upload a photo of it, and then walk it through the sales process. So we can support even the stuff that isn't in a configurator. You know, if you have, you know, lawn furniture in your system because people are, you know, buying houses and they want a fire pit and some chairs to go with it, and you sell those, they're just products. You just sell those a part of the deal. Um, you know, so we do that, you know, rent is important, right? And then, you know, here, if, if we had multiple partners here, it would list all the partners. So we're not, you know, specific to one partner. We just have our own RTO demo site set up here. But if you were using three or four partners, they would just all drop down. So we're super excited about that. You can add notes to the deal. You can add invoice notes, admin notes, production notes at the time of the deal as well. Um, and so, you know, this is, you know, pretty straightforward. You've already got the information from the customer. And then you just would hit, uh, I'm going to go back to a buyout right building here. Um, that little dashboard at the bottom down there, Shannon, is in the way of my screen. Every time I go down oh, here, it, uh, I got you. <laughs> it wants to, and so then you know what's your what's your payment method? Do you want to do a greater payment, a smaller payment? If you're a dealer, if you're a dealer, Shannon, and you're just taking the deposit for your commission, 
-hmm. then you would just use offline credit card, offline payment, and you just record for the manufacturer how you took that payment. Now, okay. if you were a dealer who was actually keeping, you know, like you were selling this business, then you could use any one of the other tools, right? Here and record it for yourself. But if you're like on a manufacturer's side and you're the dealer, you're just telling the manufacturer how you took the payment. So they know it was there, right? And so then we just do that. So if we have credit card, you can do ACH or um, or credit card. We use Claren as our primary um, partner um, for that space because they integrate with RTO Pro. And so then we can share the tokens from Claren into RTO Pro on the credit card side. So we just you know put a check down here. What's the amount of the building here and the deposit? You determine the deposit, right? We're not determining the deposit. So you just set a percentage per product, carport sheds, gazebos, you know, whatever percentage you want to take down as your deposit, that just shows up into the amount due. Um, and of course the customer can always pay more. Um, we're being quick here, we're just receiving a payment in, um, you know, we're verifying because you can take multiple. So if you come in Shannon and you want to put down 25% and you want your brother-in-law to put down 25%, we could actually take multiple payments on the same transaction from multiple cars. You know, so nice. if you bring in a check and you want to bring in a credit card also, you know, we can catch for both. So that's why we do the math here. If there's any math left, it would say, okay, you still owe us $250, right? Gotcha. And then if the deal turns backwards, like for some reason, you know, nobody's ever lost a sale in industry, I know, but we, we account for it. And if it happens to go south for some reason, or they want to make an edit after the fact, you know, you make the revisions. And then if they owe you more money or less money, this screen opens up and you can just either, you know, um, take another deposit to make it equal the amount they want, or you can just apply a bigger deposit to the building if they made a smaller adjustment, right? So we've accounted for the money moving back and forth. Um, and then over here in this section, we just hit continue again. And we have a really simple worker. This is just for review purposes. Peter's buying this building. Peter's our lead developer, by the way. Um, and then, you know, he's buying this building here. Here's the costs. Here's the deposits, add notes. And then you can sign multiple ways. You can either sign this contract by printing it and having the customer sign it, or you can actually sign on device. And then, you know, then it goes to sign now, pulls up the contract. I'll, I'll just print the contract here because, you know, we go to pull that all together. It takes a couple minutes. So yeah. I'll just spare you the drama of that. But we hit this print button here. This will actually pull up, you know, your brand, your invoices, and make it look like an actual invoice at that point. Um, and so here, you know, your brand goes over here in the corner, customer information, the date of it, the building. If you have any drawings from idea room, they come any photo ID right here. All that gets captured. Your contract language goes in here as well. And so we just brand your invoice to fit into this space. Um, and so it's really an amazing, powerful tool in that respect. Um, and then, you know, you can do this from the living room or from your office or from, you know, vacation. Like we, it's not limited, right? So if you, if you feel like you've been stuck on a lot and now you want to sell to all of Georgia or all of Kentucky, you now can sell to all of Kentucky because we can draw a picture or a map of Kentucky and, and anybody calls in, they go to your website and they can just purchase on there or they can call you. And as long as you fulfill that area, not a problem, right? And so once this gets fulfilled and submitted, um, it goes right into the order processing screen right away. And so even if the deal is still kind of in, in, in the Netherlands, so to speak, you can view this order immediately back in the order order tablet and, and your, your processing team can choose to act on it or not act on it, right? And so here's the order. These are the statuses available and you can have your own statuses. Remember I talked about, you know, building your system. If you want to say, I want to watch the paint dry as a status, go for it. We do not care. If somebody wants to record paint drying, okay. You know, but, but typically, you know, building order, building receive, start of production is fine, but we don't, we don't, really have, we don't have a monopoly on statuses. And then at the very bottom down here, you have the purchase agreement available to view and a delivery receipt. We haven't filled this out completely because sometimes you don't have your serial number yet. But when you go to deliver this building, you just hit that and then it shows up as a delivery receipt and you can take it with you. Um, you know, so we're building tools like that. And if this was a manufacturing site, it would be a work order, purchase agreement, work order and delivery receipt. So then you could just send a redacted building drawings to the, to the shop. You know, some people use the invoice for everything, totally fine. Some people just want to send the shop what they need to know. You know, they don't need anything else, but the drawings and where the doors and windows go and they're happy, right? And so, yeah. um, you know, we make that available. And so in our world, these tools are available. And then, you know, if you have, if you're in the order, I'm going to move over here to the admin team real quick, and then I'll pop off this conversation. But essentially in the, in the admin world, if you go to orders, we, hi hi we highlight processing step in particular. That means typically that these are orders that that are in the queue. So if you just want to know what's going on order and just processing, because your job is to review the paperwork, 
you can select down to processing right here and you'll just see all the orders in processing. If you're the sales manager, you want to know why things are still stuck in pending. You know, what's going on with this? Is the customer not yeah. signed yet? What's hanging up? You can just look at all the pending orders. If you're in dispatch, you just go to ready for delivery and you just pull up orders you need. And so, so the tool is pretty robust. And then, you know, behind the screen, I can't quite see it, but um, you can search, you know, by serial number or customer and pull up an order as well. Um, and then, and if, if, if any of these status, these statuses only show up when there's something in them, Shannon, right? So this isn't always, okay. you know, always populated, but if you have nothing in ready for delivery, start selling, let's go, you know, yeah. <laughs> let's give those shed guys something to do, you know? Um, but it, it doesn't clog up the screen, right? It just keeps growing through your sales. And so as you get busier, you're going to have something, any payment, any documents ready to order. And if you're a dealer, and this is one of the things I want to share as well. We have a whole purchasing segment where you can build loads. So if you're a wholesale shed buyer and you need to buy from a Lark or a Handy House or a Homestead or whoever you're buying from, you can actually create a PO and load a trailer full of buildings that are come to whatever lot you want them sent to. And then you have a way to receive them in and take pictures and create them as products, right? And we have that whole process built. So dealers, you know, we have a whole set of tools for them and manufacturers have a whole set of tools for them um, because, you know, they have different needs. Um, but what I really like about our system is that we are serving multiple kinds of companies in the shed space. For manufacturers, we create the dealer store on their site, and they have that order. If you're a manufacturer, you have access to all this stuff. Even if it's in the dealer store, you know what's going on because they're using your site and your idea or your shed pro. And, you know, so you can, you know, as a, as a manufacturer, you can see what's coming down the pipe, you know, as opposed to waiting for it to show up. So we're, we're excited about all of our tools. Um, and, you know, Very and, and flexible. So. And that flex flexibility is what so many people need, because although we kind of identify ourselves as being very similar and we are and selling mm -hmm. a lot of the same products. I mean, um, there's you know, there's a lot of different things that we're seeing in the shed space now. And like you said, you know, your 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 average dealer location is going to maybe have four or five different SKUs there. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So you a one size fits all makes a lot of sense. It's just it's really about uh, uh it's it's really about like increasing your 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 time, your availability, and and taking a more simplistic approach is the way mm -hmm. I would phrase it in a in a nutshell. But yeah, yeah I love yeah. it, man. Like yeah, it's it's so you see that we actually added one more building because I completed that pending sale. You know, I went through the process, and so the salesperson got credit for more building immediately showed up on their dashboard, right? And if, if they want to start an order, Shannon, this is, you know, that I was talking to, I alluded to a little bit earlier. When you click on this screen, create order here, you know, you can either select from a catalog. What I love about the catalog is, you know, your existing inventory is, is there, of course, what's on the lot. But the virtual drawings are so important because if you have these hot sellers in these hot colors and you know you're going to be able to sell a 12 by 16 lofted barn or whatever, or a cabin, you can just pre-design that and it just grabs that product and over and over and so your salesperson can just go right to the, what the customer's talking about and, and pull up an idea or a ship road drawing and then start to modify it and you know work with the customer right from existing drawings. So the customer could grab one ready to build. Yeah, I want that blue building over there with that white you know trim on it and order that for me. You know, and so that's beautiful. But you can also go here to the to idea or ship pro. And you can also manually enter a building. You can just walk through that and you can pick your styles, you know, and then you can put in the side 12 by 16 by seven. Um, so we just been listening to the industry a ton. And what we've heard them say is they want a simple point of sale solution and good order management tools, but they also want to be able to sell more than one thing, you know? And so, um, you know, cause if you have a system just to do one thing, then what about the rest of your business? And so if we can knock out three or four or five on your list, you know, and you have one system for most of your business, you know, we can't do all people's businesses most of the time, but we can do almost all people's businesses. But, yeah, you know, there's always going to be a few side things. And so this manual order entry process works. Also, this important, important design is great because if you're an idea room or shed pro, you know, you can be doing all your lead stuff in idea room and you can be working with, you know, um, you know, HubSpot or whatever. And then when you finalize the deal with the customer, when you're in there building out these things and you want to grab drawing number three and start that, you just grab the hashtag from there and you just drop it in here and it starts the sales transaction. So you can do all your revisions in your configurator and then you can just grab it, you know, a little number up here in the hash 
and cut and paste that into here and start the sales transaction with the agreed upon drawing from the customer and just start walking. So we give you lots Excellent. of ways to actually start a sale in, in our space. Well, and you know, a lot of this starts, uh, and you've talked about it a couple different times here at the three D configurators. Yeah. You know, we've been able to partner uh, with with several, uh, uh, not only uh, Idea Room. Uh, if we're not finished with that, we're working through the details of some of that, but we work with them closely, like uh, mm -hmm. constantly. Uh, and then James Price over at, at, at Shed Pro, but even uh, mm -hmm. some other companies, Digital Shed Builder, you know, My Shed and Matthew Black's program. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've reached out to all the rest and said, we want to be able to have uh, a, a, a partnership and a collaborative effort with you. It's so, like we we put it out there to say, hey, if you want that, we want that. So like, by all means, we'd love that. And we've learned in the marketing space, particularly Tristan, that like that's very imperative to have a 3D configurator. And I'll tell you what, you can go directly to them and there's not a problem with that. But there's a reason we're creating all of these collaborative efforts is because they have affiliate programs and there is money to be made from that. So if you'll give me the Shed Geek an opportunity to help make that introduction, we'll be glad to. Because guess what? We do get some benefit from that financially. And we just that's that's just out there. And you know what? In some of these programs, you do too. So like, you know, mm -hmm. referral partners are becoming very important. Uh, I saw where, um, you know, other other companies have launched some of these referral programs to say, hey, if you'll if you'll do it and you already use my system, we'll give you some, some money back on that or whatever. So. Hello from the Shed Geek. Let's take a walk through My Shed 3D. With My Shed 3D, your company can simply add a 3D builder button to its website. Once the customer clicks onto the 3D builder button, they will enter some basic information to get started. Remember, this information is captured in your leads tab, whether or not the customer designs a building. This is very valuable information that turns a cold call into a warm lead. Next, they begin the design of their shed by selecting a primary use, a style, and a size that best fits their need. My Shed 3D has multiple styles that are available and consistent with traditional, and barn styles within the shed industry. However, if you offer a customized or non-traditional style, My Shed Solutions can build that design for future use. We can also save on some design features that make it easy to adjust without a major rebuild or added fees for design changes. For instance, wanna offer a steeper roof pitch? Just navigate to the settings tab, then click the building models, click edit building, and just enter the new roof center height and the design changes will reflect on this style option. This will save you thousands versus traditional design changes that need to build a whole new style to match your design. From here, simply choose the style, siding, and color. Then choose a trim and roofing style and color. Next, let's add a door. That was goofy. Next, let's add a door. It is required to add a door to move forward with the design as at least one ingress egress option is necessary. Then add some design changes for personalization, maybe some windows or a porch or some interior shelving. Next, just click save design and the customer will receive an automated text with all the features of the design to the email address entered at the beginning. From here, they can edit the design, view the details of the design Pay now to order the shed or click rent to own to complete the necessary steps to purchase a shed they designed with My Shed 3D. The design enters the admin panel as a quote, and this is where the manufacturer can update the progress of the design once a deposit is taken. My Shed, from design to delivery, we have you covered. There's a lot of like work at people, obviously, and you know, trying to trying to do better. And this is what I say. It's kind of like whenever people say, but what if somebody else creates a podcast? I'm like, what if somebody else creates a podcast? Like, what about it? And they're like, well, I mean, isn't that going to bother you? It's like, hey, listen, I'm not going to operate with a gatekeeper system here. Like, yeah. no one can tell, no one can tell you what to do and what not to do in business. Yeah. This is what I, this is what I would tell you. Do a good job. Do a good job. Yeah. Be consistent. Be there whenever you don't feel like doing it, because there's going to be times you don't feel like doing it, and then your passion is going to have to be the thing that's going to have to pull you forward, not your profit. You know, right. you're, you're gonna have you're gonna have to you're gonna have to feel very passionate about what you're doing. You're gonna want to give up on it quick. But if you come in and you do a good job, and Lord forbid, you even do better, like you even do better. Well, isn't that the expectation? Because then it's gonna cost 
cause me to want to improve. I'm going to have to start doing mm -hmm. things or thinking about other things. So instead of a gatekeeper approach that says, you stay out of here, I've got this covered. It's you're welcome. And I hope you do better because it'll cause me to want to do better. So, you know, um, I'll, uh, some of these systems, I don't know, are, are is one going to win out ultimately? And th I, I just don't think it's going to work that way. I think there's space for everybody. I think you're yeah. all, so many of you are doing a good job. I think that people yeah. should call you, Tristan. I think they should give you a call. Yeah, thank you. Recall. That's the thing. You don't yeah. know if you don't call, but all of these guys are going to welcome your phone call and go through this system. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, that service really becomes super important at that point, doesn't it? Because yeah. like, who's going to serve you? So yeah, you know, Shannon, before um, you know uh, we, we part here, I've got a call in a few minutes as well. Um, you know, we we had a, a manufacturer who got downsized, right? Like they, you know, the manufacturer was a big manufacturer nationwide. They decided they didn't want to be in that space any longer. And he was at a funeral of all things. And he met up with somebody else and said, you got to call Cal, you know? And so he called me and because he's going to build, like he's a builder. He's been building sheds for this other company for so long. And, you know, and, and yeah. so they started building systems and, you know, he was lost. And, and now he's up to 30, 30 dealers after about, about seven months. Right. And, and and he's been using our system and we're not, you know, we're not perfect. Right. But we took somebody who was a builder and we gave him some tools and we helped him get a website, a URL, and RTO partners and, and configurators. And he is running, you know. And, and so, you know, even if, you know, some of your clients are, you know, attached to large manufacturers and they feel like they need to make a pivot at some point or they get downsized, you know, for whatever reason, you know, we we wanted to serve them, right? And, and we were up with that one manufacturer who got downsized, you know, number one manufacturer for this company and got downsized and, you know, they're still in business. Now they're like doing, you know, a hundred transactions a month or something, right? Um, you know, and so that kind of stuff is so rewarding to me because, you know, we we were to help help them continue their journey and do what they were, what they were, what they want to do and continue to do. And so, um, you know, and then we have the other, other spectrum where we got people now who want to set up placements, you know, or they... They sell just you know carports and and and, they, and sheds like we're we don't we don't have a dog in that fight we don't serve you whatever your business model is and whatever you want to do we just want to see if we're a good partner for you um, you know and and we're excited to serve people. Jen, I will I will share also you know the affiliate marketing thing is a little tricky for us. Um, you know we we do have you know a small residual we get for Clarence you know because we built the software to make that all possible. But usually when it comes to affiliate marketing, I like to just advertise with my partners, you know, and then and then I also like to have my partners just extend discounts to my clients because, you know, if, if it's idea or Chef Pro, I don't really have a dog in that fight. Like I I want I want you to pick the right configurator for you. Yeah. And sometimes it's price, sometimes it's not. And so both those guys offer different discounts to our clients, you know, because they want to they want to earn their business. But I don't, I don't, I don't shove them either way. When it comes to RTO, I only have you know a handful of the integrated at this point, and so I always recommend Shanky Rentals and JMA and Scott's RTO and Heartland, right? Because those are the ones that are integrated right now, and you know. But I, I just have like you know this desire for people to pick the right relationship, right? That's it. Um, yeah. You know, and so for me, it's been a little simpler to just you know not worry about the affiliate side as much. Um, it's helpful. But I just, I, I do get those affiliates because I give them back to the customers, right? Like for me, like at this point, I'm like, oh, you just, you know, make a deal with, with Shed Pro or Idea Room or Shed Geek. You just do that and then I will just plug you in, right? Yeah. So um, if that makes sense, right? It's so, absolutely, um, it's a it's a thin line to walk sort of whenever you're in the program uh, or in the mm -hmm. industry because you, you want to make sure that you're doing right by folks. I mean, like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, uh, Tristan, like I'm just not going to feel good about if I ever get over on somebody. Like, yeah. you know, like you can't be walking in Christ and like also feel good about like, yeah. oh, I, I I got that guy for something. So like we, mm -hmm. you know, whenever somebody says, well, who do you recommend? I say, man, it's it's really about figuring out who matter, who who makes the most sense for you. So like Absolutely. rather than have, come in and have a strong opinion, because like what if I give you a strong opinion and strong arm you into using one particular program? Then like you don't like it and they don't best serve you and it didn't work out. They're like, I, I don't, they're not gonna take any recommendations from you. So like we we have to ask questions, build relationships, and try and figure out based off your business model who makes the most sense. 
like you can come to that conclusion, but isn't it nice to have that conclusion with a, a sounding board there to talk to and things like that? Absolutely. And that's, you know, and that, and that's why the financial benefit from it, we're not making our, our living from it, but here's what we did learn, man, you need a 3d configurator. Cause in our marketing adventures, it matters so much. Like we've seen Absolutely. so much more conversion traffic from that. So like, I, I guess what I'm saying is like, I'm going to push these guys products, whether they pay us to push them or not, whether they advertise with us or not, because yeah. we see the value in, in those as well too. And I think but, also Shannon, in that consulting space, you know, where you are, that's how you sort of monetize that service is you bring right. partners to the group and you, and that's the product you're offering. In my world, I have a platform and I sort of, you know, it's a little different nuance. You know, I yeah. will benefit from integrating with Idea Room or Shepro. Like I will, it will be a better experience for my clients, right? Yeah. But in your yeah. world, you know, that, that does make sense for the way to monetize that relationship. In my world, I monetize it through a monthly subscription of three ninety nine yeah. or five ninety nine. Yeah. You know, and so it's a different way of doing business. But I also, you know, for the most part, I just want my customers to get those deals because if you're willing to offer my client a deal to integrate with you then go earn it. You know, like you, you already said, you know, talk to me. And I'm like, and I don't, I just say, okay, talk to them. Right. And you, and you and I both know that there are better fits for certain clients, right? Like they just sometimes doesn't make sense to recommend a certain way because it just isn't the right fit for them. Yeah. And that's the value of gatekeeping. That's the value of being a trusted source in the industry is like you, you do, you do know what might be best for them, but you give them the benefit of the doubt to say, okay, like, you know, here's what I think would be best, but I would talk to both. Or three yeah. of them, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you when you when you've got a relationship working like that, you can you can lean on that, and that's what that trusted service comes back. We're gonna get it wrong. We probably have gotten it wrong at some point. Not, I'm sure we're gonna yeah. get it wrong, but uh, you know, I, I try to clear the air every night, especially with myself and with my savior, yeah. and pray about it and say, hey, you know, like lead uh, like like uh, lead me into the right conversations and lead me out of the wrong conversations and things like that. So I think you just have to be sensitive to the Holy spirit too, on stuff like that too. And listen, have a and transparent, to you know, transparent, because if people Absolutely. know that you're taking a commission, you know, then that's okay. That's when they don't we know. Did that. We did that. Yeah, absolutely. We And that's why we'll just say it on the show. And some people say, you give away too much information. I say, for me, it's the exact right amount of information because they know who I am. Like I'm transparent. It's easy. Like you're not going to get a different guy when I'm not on the microphone. We did that in the marketing space. I know we got to go. We did that in the marketing space. Mm -hmm. We had actually had some people say, man, why didn't you like, like come partner with us? And we're just like, man, why didn't you advertise with us? Like we sent you $200,000 <laughs> worth of quotes. And it's like, we didn't advertise because we were getting free quotes. And I'm like, makes perfect sense. Like you didn't have to advertise. I'm sending you lots of business. I just needed to find a way to capture that market. And then, yeah. and then the same with rent to own. I respect the, the companies I've worked for in the RTL mm -hmm. space. I respect all of the job offers and all of that stuff. So, so for me to be in that space is not a, you know, to me, it's not a, Mm -hmm. uh, a, a smack in the face. It's a, can I be welcome too? Can I be yeah. part of this potential success too? Because we have, you know, and I, I think I can do a good job too, but I don't, I don't think I can do a better job than you. I'm not coming in saying you're doing bad. So I do better. It's like, can I be involved too? We've, we've, we've walked into the space and we just, we want to be good stewards of that. Tristan, mm -hmm. I've been doing this with everybody. I know you got to go first, first and foremost, uh, how do people reach you? Let's go there. How, if they want to get in touch with you, how do they reach you? Yeah, you can, um, you know, go to our website, that calcanhelp.com, and you can find it on Shannon's site as well. Um, and then you can um, also call if you'd like to call. It's 425-359-3279. Happy to answer calls. Um, we can see at the shows, you know, we go to both the Shed Expo and um, the Shed Carport Garage Show. Um, you know, and, it, it, and I would just like the opportunity to earn your business. Honestly, for me, just serving you. And if, if, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And if it's not, it's not. But, you know, I will be a better person for having a half an hour conversation with you. I will learn so much. I will grow as a person. And But also, if we have the right tools for you, we would love to develop a long relationship, you know, where we're just looking out for your best interests. So, um, yeah, however you want to reach out to me, call, email, uh, call Shannon. It's all good. We're happy to just, you know, field those anyway. That's perfect. Uh, I need to talk to you at some point about uh, setting up a, uh, if you'd rather have a lead form on there, I don't know if you got conversion tracking set up on your side when they get to your website, mm -hmm. so we can so we can do that. This is the beauty of the digital era. 
this is this is why I love what I do with the podcast because we can say, oh, if somebody came to to Tristan through mm -hmm. the platform, we can sort of measure right. that. And for other advertisers like yourself, that's super important because they're really trying to gauge mm -hmm. their ROI. And, and we're all trying to do that. Even as a manufacturer, you're trying to measure all your customers that come to your site. So, yeah. so I need to talk to you about that. But hey, rapid questions, quick questions, any questions you got. I didn't let you do this last time. If you want to do it now, I didn't prepare you. Any questions you have for the Shed Geek, uh, faith related, shed related, personal related, put me on the hot seat, let you interview for a second. Any questions at all, one or two, we'll make it quick, simple, fast. What, what do you yeah. want to know that you haven't heard from me yet that I'll tell you live? Well, what I want to know is what are, what are you working on professionally, Shannon? What's What are you working on to be a better podcaster? You know, what are you doing to hone your craft? Like, what is, what is the Lord speaking to you about and how you connect, deliver, share? Well, originally I could go back and listen to every podcast, but since I started going to two a week, um, it's been hard to do that, to go back and perfect myself. I've tried to become okay. a better listener. I have had some people uh, tell me whenever I ask for criticism, constructive, they say, hey, you'll ask a question and not give them a chance to answer it. And I'm like, okay. So when you hear it multiple times, you go, probably accurate, right? <laughs> Don't just ask a yes. question or an elongated uh, question because- I have to fill the space if I have mm -hmm. a guest who's not really uh, comfortable with speaking. So I'll fill right. the space until they kind of gather their, you know, composure to want to answer or ask another question. Um, and so I just I, naturally as a podcaster, you fill the space, even if you don't mean to, you just, you just naturally have to do it. So I have to try to become a better, a better listener. Um, okay. And that's the feedback I've gotten. But as far as professionally, um, uh, gosh, we're gonna we're we're probably gonna change some of the nature of the podcast soon. I think you're gonna see some more co-hosting. Uh, okay. You may even see an additional show, and I think okay. we're gonna add. We're gonna try to work on adding value because the the value of the podcast, just like anything else you're doing, whether it's a magazine, television mm -hmm. show, doesn't matter, is the content. If you keep right. good content creation as the king and not your personal like uh, opportunities mm -hmm. as the king, then that's what really matters. And I think people. Yeah driving down the road or swinging away at nails this morning or selling sheds, whatever they're doing today, they enjoy good content. Every show's not for everybody. Let's just be honest. Right. Like, you Absolutely. know, not everybody's going to get something out of every show. I don't, my favorite podcasters, I don't listen to every one of them. So like, I don't take offense to that. We just want to keep content that is relevant to all the shed industry. And it's, 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 um, underlings, whatever those things are, other ancillary yeah. products. So that that's just where I'm at, but I think you'll like where we're coming in the next six months with uh, some more co-hosting and and more ad content that's going to be creative. So yeah, no, I, you built some really good collaborations and you've served this industry well, Shannon. And so I want to just thank you for you know trying to walk that line. Um, it's really it's a fine line to walk, and you know this industry is pretty tight. You know, I mean, you know, when I was talking, you know, I didn't realize, you know, this, these two people are talking about actually brother-in-law. I'm like, whoa. Or like, oh, you're the younger brother of that one. I'm like, oh, um, you know, it's like, you know, <laughs> you just you you just have to assume they're either related by marriage or by blood, um, yeah. <laughs> or they they know somebody else, right? And um, and so, but it also makes the industry really special because you know yes. it is so close, right? Um, yeah. And there's a whole new group of people have come in that are business people now who now aren't related to industry and are in this space as well. Right. And that's, you know, that's good because competition is healthy. Um, you know, it makes you a better builder, a better seller, a better business owner. You know, that's that's great. We should always yeah. embrace, you know, just being a better version of ourselves. And, and, and really competition does do that. Right. My son, he's a really he's a he's an elite 400 runner, 800 runner. But when he runs out in front of the group, he slows down because the race is already over. But when he's having to nose it out, like he is hauling. Right. And like, you know, it's better for him that he has more competition, right? It's better for him not to win every race by a landslide. It's better for him that he actually has some people that can beat him, right? Because then it makes him come to the gym more, to put in more miles, to That's be right. driven, you know? And so you know I, the story, you know, the story then, of the, like the four minute mile, you know, how the four minute mile yeah. wasn't broken for 25 or 30 years. And it, it doesn't that speak biblically to not, to not know it's possible. This is a less Brown to not know it's possible. 
You know what I mean? He says that all the time to, 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 to not know that you can even go do this thing. And I love listening to him, but the four minute mile wasn't broken for what? 25, 30 years. Yeah, I, no I one, remember, but was, we thought we had Michael. peaked. We thought we peaked, at, 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 you know, I mean, in, in track yeah. and field and not being able to, a human couldn't possibly do it. Uh, one guy did it. One guy did it. I never can remember his name. He done it. And since he's done it, it's been like 400 people or something like that have done it since. But mentally, we've already blocked ourselves in saying it's not possible. So that's what I love about creativity. And I think that's what God's made us to be, uh, Tristan, is to be creative. So like for, for me, when there's not a way, I'm definitely the guy back here going, how do I find a way? There's got to be a creative way to solve or to create. And, you know, when you go create, my Angelou said creativity is beautiful. Uh, the more of it that you use, the more of it you get back. You know, that's yeah. what's the beauty of creativity. So like, just go find a way. You know, the answer is not no. The answer is not yet. Not yet. Yeah. I don't know how to do that yet, but I'm going to get there. So um, listen, I've enjoyed yeah. this thoroughly. I'm yeah, so glad the so internet much, held out for us. We love working with you. We certainly uh, appreciate you advertising with us as well. Um, yeah. We love the industry and we know we're going to see more of you and wishing you lots and lots of success in 2024. Um, I know you got to go. I've got a call coming yeah. up too. Do you want to do a quick prayer over the industry? Would you mind if I ask? Uh, yeah, I'll gladly pray? pray. Yeah. All right. Father, I want to thank you for this time just to talk about the important things, family and serving the customer in front of us and serving our team, Lord. And, and, and I'm grateful that we have tools available today to actually, you know, do that. And so um, for the dealers, manufacturers, people in the space who are thinking about technology, Father, and the next steps they make, um, just give them the insight they need and the wisdom they need and the right relationships they need, Father, to make the best choice for their team and their customers. Um, thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Tristan, I will talk to you soon. Appreciate everything you do. Yeah. Hey, this is Mo Lunsford in sunny Union Grove, North Carolina, and we want to say thank you to all the guests and listeners.